At student level, we look at it uh, in two ways. We look at it at a year level. So we have data days where teachers on that year level are taken out and they look at the NAPLAN data in relation as well to other data that we collect. We collect data from ASA as well as each class or year level does audits of skills in both literacy and numeracy. So what we try and do on those days is look at the data to find the strengths and weaknesses and for us to get some correlation between all of the data that we do receive. Teachers then identify areas where a number of students or we might have quite a bit of the cohort are not achieving in that particular area. That then becomes a teaching focus. So the teachers take on board, they're the areas that they need to incorporate into their planning. We then also look at it from an uh, individual student level and we look at those students who sometimes have missed a few areas. Now that becomes a small group targeted teaching area. So we can identify those students, we can group them and we can then focus our teaching. We then use a pre and post testing with that, with our audits. And then we can look at that as far as they didn't have it here, but in our testing in the next few months will show that they are able to get those. So we also have our goals and our measurable outcomes. Using NAPLAN data at the student level allows us to see that all of our kids are on track. Again though, I think it's important to, to um, reaffirm that it's about corroboration and triangulation, that nothing should be coming as a surprise to us. So it, it's a key tool for, for us in our curriculum um, monitoring. It's a key tool for us in our benchmarking of our own um, um, student data. And it helps um, also in the identification of individual needs of students. For example, the item um, reports allow us to identify the skills to target with particular students. So that provides precise teaching programs and it allows us to build the skills of teachers in the identified areas and the kids are going to be the beneficiaries of that precise and informed teaching. NAPLAN data is used completely at a student level because everything that we plan within the school has to do with the children and improving that learning. So we look at the data and we, we look for trends within that data within either individual children, groups of children and then the whole cohort of children. And within that, that allows us to then uh, focus in on curriculum areas that need to be improved the next year. For example, uh, we noticed a fair few years back at our school that there was a running trend in boys reading comprehension was uh, underachieving in the NAPLAN results where we hadn't really noticed in at a class-based level. We then implemented the next year a new Stars and Cars program within that and also implemented uh, a day once a term where dads would come into the classroom to promote reading amongst boys. So the result of the new program that came from the data results and the dads in the classroom meant that a, a rising trend then in boys and, and having a, a closer match with girls then in their reading comprehension. The NAPLAN results and data is also used for our staffing allocation. We really look at where there are weaknesses within, again, individual students, group, small groups of children or whole cohorts and we allocate our staffing um, in accordance with that where the needs are and that is really, it, it's enhanced our student development and the results have improved as a result of that. At a student level we use NAPLAN uh, band data uh, to work out exactly what students need to do uh, to move forward. Um, specifically giving teachers learning, teaching and learning strategies so that they can uh, provide students with the opportunities that they need um, to achieve that next level. Yeah, once, once teachers have identified using the broad brush stroke where a student's situated, if he needs help in writing or he needs help in his, uh, around his numeracy, teachers then, because they're experts, because they make professional fine-grained judgments, they pick up fairly quickly just on the basis of their interactions with the student on a day-to-day -day basis. 
what the student needs to improve. I think NAPLAN's strength is in the broad identification of students with needs or indeed who need to be challenged more because they're particularly bright rather than being a diagnostic tool that's going to help teachers to do their job on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the things we've been able to do is to identify particular students with particular needs. For example, we've, uh, through the NAPLAN data, identified students who've had, um, who need assistance with writing. And we've got together an intervention group in Year 8, which has been highly effective. Those things really came out of identification in the NAPLAN data. We use it to define the gaps, so where are our students are missing information from the curriculum, where are we not being effective with that. We've used it this year to create targeted classes for students at uh, the top end of NAPLAN scores uh, who are not achieving their maximum growth. So that's provided us uh, with uh, the information to provide uh, those classes for, for those students. It's also provided us with information for our parents as we've stepped back from streaming. So we have made that decision this year uh, to discontinue streaming in the school and having the information from NAPLAN that says that what we're doing for our, uh, the students uh, at the lower end of achievement is working. It's working for the middle, but it's actually not working for uh, the top end of our students. So having that information for our parents means that we can make those decisions with confidence. Well, student level is really important. We sit down and we have a look at a number of things. The actual NAPLAN data package and the smart data is a fantastic user-friendly service. Well, we believe it is. Um, so we're able to look at that, the distractors, and we also look at um, a lot of the data and how our students are performing. Often once we've gathered the data and looked at it, we might have questions about why students answered in different ways. And so then we're able to go away and um, complete Newman's error analysis and take out specific questions and then we interview the students. And then that gives us more information again about how and why students are answering the way they are. It helps us then to reflect on our teaching. Is it that the children are not understanding or comprehending the problem, or is it actually that they're not able to apply themselves and they don't have that mathematical knowledge to actually achieve the question? So there's lots of different ways that we use it, but that's one particular way individually. We use NAPLAN data at a student level, firstly to look at our cohorts and to see within the context how they how they achieve compared to national outcomes. We drill down on those kinds, that kind of information more specifically when we maybe have a student has an individual need and then we look at the item analysis and we work out whether that child needs to have an individual learning program from, and also use some of the teaching strategies which are found on NAPLAN to actually try and address some of those needs. We, we use NAPLAN data to also look at groupings of children, the range of children we have, for example, at my school currently, you know, high achieving students. And interestingly, we've seen some of the information we got from NAPLAN about our high achieving writers not achieving the outcomes that we think they should. Upon further investigation, we found that it's really the item analysis that the sorts of things they weren't doing were linked to not being adventurous enough with writing. They were sticking to the guidelines that we'd taught them, that we, they were such good students, they wanted to do what we had told them. What we then did with the teachers is have a look at that data, explore it, and try to create more natural writers for our students so that when they write, they're not writing to a test, they're writing as a natural writer. Use of NAPLAN data is, it can be used across a quite range of key, key learning areas. Currently we've looked at our mathematics school program and the school program had a very strong focus on computation, on problem solving and language. We wanted to make sure the other strands in mathematics were also being met, the outcomes were also being met. And we looked at the data from NAPLAN and we were able to ascertain that we actually were achieving the same standards over the years in those other strands that we hadn't prioritised as much in mathematics as previously. This has given us some good information to plan the next step, especially with the new mathematics syllabus coming on board. This is where we mainly use our NAPLAN data. So we look towards 
using the data for the following year. So when students are put into their classes, we expect that all the teachers go on and make up classes for their, their new cohort of students and look at then which area is the one that we need to focus on for the students of that class. So this is where we, it is really important because that allows the teacher to understand where their class is coming from and to support them in their learning across KLAs but um, mainly implementing the skills that they need to progress them in, in their literacy and numeracy. The learning and support faculty use this data a lot to identify students who may need significant um, assistance with literacy and numeracy and they uh, do their withdrawal programs and support teachers across KLAs with putting in scaffolds and support strategies to assist them in accessing the curriculum um, at an age stage appropriate level.